I have a fantastic crew back home at ACC Performance. My guys are on top of it. They're passionate about what they do. And when you have a driving force, I don't know if you remember the Chicago Bears back in the day, but you know, they were just, you could put 14 guys. Welcome to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoatings. This episode of Sam's Garage. Sam and Kevin Ford install a new winch on the Jeep TJ Rock Crawler. Then Sam and Doug Harris cover the specs on the bottom end of the new engine for the Alpha One GTO. Special guest Bob Douglas from Rod and Supply helps Sam with some maintenance on his Infinity. Lastly, Nelson Gill and his daughter Nora walk us through the process of installing a torque converter on a transmission. A winch is a critical part of any off-road vehicle. If you're going to go off-roading, it's not a question of if you're gonna get stuck, but when you're gonna get stuck. Today we're gonna to be installing our winch on this huge rock crawler and we have to go with a winch that's gonna be very capable of pulling something so heavy out of any kind of a rut that we're in. That's right, I went with a 12,000 pound warrant, it's the biggest one they got. Mm -hmm. And of course, like me, I had to have all the accessories, the website's just full of stuff and I'm like, oh, I need this, I need that. There's a lot of accessories, yeah. I can't believe some of the parts that are available on that site. That's very cool, yep. especially with the organizer that goes in the back of the seat. Yeah, they got this tool bag, they've got, it's wireless now. Yeah, back and when I was you have to come out and do the clutch, it's yeah. still dirty. I know, back when I was doing this, you had to get out here, you had to, this is great. Get us out of anything, right? Well, to help the guys behind me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice of you. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna be showing you guys today how to install this winch, how to properly wire it up, and then we're gonna show you how to install the rope and some of the accessories, so let's get started. So, obviously this isn't the bumper and this isn't permanent, but we need to see where this is gonna land, where our cables are going. Anytime you're in the mock-up phase, that's exactly what you're doing. You're mocking everything up to make sure you want it where you want it, it's gonna work where it's at. Yeah. Then you finalize everything. Yeah, and this, I mean, you can get these winch plates pretty cheap. It helps stabilize it. So we've got, uh, we gotta put the, the nuts right here. Mm -hmm. In the winch hole? Yeah. They gotta go in here. The winch comes with everything you need. This is the Platinum Series, so it's got all kinds of cool upgrades like that wireless remote. Yeah. And then it's also got the synthetic rope. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you gotta run a Haas Fairlead. It comes with a Haas Fairlead, but I had to get the, the upgraded nice version. Nice one, of course. Yeah. That's why they make them. So this is another thing about when you're putting your winch, with the bumper, this should come down just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we don't wanna block too much on our airflow. Our airflow. Absolutely. It's also why it was important for you to get that giant flex of light in there. Giant yeah. flex of light with a giant fan that's gonna work. You were talking about how the shroud came off the surface of the radiator so much, and right. that's because the motor's so powerful and that's it's right. big. Yeah. So we know we got plenty of cooling with that flex of light setup. Yeah. And I was thinking about, we'll probably come in here Give ourselves Do a little a, shroud, and get the air yeah. from escaping. Very smart, good idea. We didn't get this perfect, but I'm not as worried about it because that synthetic rope. If it was cable, I'd be worried about kinking. And, and it'd be easier to wind up. It would just fall Yeah, itself. it would fall on itself. I couldn't resist. Yeah, and that matches this as well. It looks right. really good. It's forged, so we'll just throw that on there. All right, Sam, since I did all the hard work on the first part, 
What are you doing down here? I am uh, routing the power and cable uh, ground wires, and we're going to be running over 400 amps on this. We yeah. want to go straight to the battery. We're going to be using a cutoff switch from low car, yeah. but it's rated at 300 amps. That's right. So I figure since we're having you know all the electrical stuff with the fans and all that, that's going to be on the engine side. Mm -hmm. Why not just run a separate battery for these? You see Absolutely. any issues with that? Isolate it, no issues. As long as we got the alternator hooked up to where you can charge it, we'll have no problems. Perfect. And this is where you guys, when you're running your power and ground cables, make sure that you stay away from any kind of metal. It's a good idea to maybe take a radiator hose, split it in half, go over both cables, zip tie it in place, anywhere there may be metal, so that because you're rock crawling, there's gonna right. be a lot of flexing. Yeah. The last thing we need is a fire, because it's not gonna be fused. We should be good to go. Welcome back to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoating. The Alpha One GTO is getting an engine upgrade. In favor of the stock engine, Doug decided to go with some American V8 muscle. The Ford 302 engine has been stroked to a 347. Fun fact, this engine actually belonged to Doug's brother, so he'll be reminded of them every time he presses on the throttle. Well, we've gotten to the exciting part of our build, and that is putting together the engine. We got ourselves a 302 stroked out to a 347. 47. And anytime you guys are putting aluminum heads on a Ford 302, the heads are always going to be bored out for a 302 or a 351 Windsor. So you're going to have to have bushings if you're using factory heads. Or in Doug's case, he went to a bigger bolt, a half inch bolt, yep. so we don't need the threads. The heads are already got holes for them. Yeah, the other thing when you're stroking the motor like we did here, it's real important that when you do the stroker and they're doing the machining for your block, that they notch everything out. Because being stroked, as it goes all the way around, it the clearances are a lot tighter and you have to notch the blocks in order for the rods to clear and for the pistons to operate properly. Otherwise, you're gonna have some interferences. Absolutely, and then when you're putting the crankshaft in, make sure you use a lot of assembly lube. Make sure if you're using aftermarket bearings to read the instructions because sometimes the bearings will have three grooves, sometimes they'll have two grooves, and it'll tell you whether those three or two grooves are gonna be at the timing chain or they're gonna be at the flex plate. So it's very important to read that or you will destroy your crankshaft. And then when you're doing your ARP bolts and you're using your ARP lube, it's very important that anywhere there's friction which is the threads, the bottom portion of the washer onto the surface of the, cat, the cap, and the bottom surface of the bolt onto the washer. You want to make sure that you have assembly lube on all those items so that you get a proper torque and no friction is going to get in your way. Yeah, and, and also when your block is bare, go ahead and chase all your threads. Um, if you don't chase the threads and you have something into it, even though you put the lube into it, you may not get a right torque setting. So just get a tap, run it down, chase your threads, and everything will be, put the lube in and the torque numbers are right where you want. Now this particular motor, we don't know what we're going to use as far as the oil pan. We have two, front sump and a rear sump. Because we have an engine swap here, sometimes you have to go over the steering rack and sometimes you clear it. So right. that's why we haven't put the oil pan on yet. Also as far as the front cover co goes, we don't know what kind of accessory system we're going to use because we don't need uh, power steering. We're going to be right. using electric power steering. So we really only need AC because Doug wants to be cold in the summer. And we're going to have an alternator. So we want to use the correct water pump to go with right. our timing cover mm -hmm. for the accessory system. And then we're going to do a nice intake manifold, nice valve covers, and we should be good. Absolutely. Now I had my very trusted machine shop I've been working with for 25 years do all the clearancing, inspect this motor out for us to be able to reassemble here with no issues. If you don't have that and you're doing this at home, there are some things you need to know. You have to make sure you have the right tools. So let's just say you pull a motor down at home and it doesn't go to a machine shop and you want to check it. You're going to need to have a set of uh, micrometers and this so you can measure the crankshaft. You're also going to need tools here to measure the bores and you use the micrometers with that. Or if you have veneer calipers, and with calipers you can once again ahead and measure everything out because you want to go ahead and check all of your clearances from your crankshaft to your rods to your bearings to you know exactly where you're at. If you don't have those things and you want to do some checking, that's where plastic gauge comes in. 
They've got them anywhere from zero to three, up to six, and even blue, it goes up to 10. So you wanna take this, you take a piece of it, put it across the journal, put your rod cap down or your main cap down. You'll measure it, there's measurements right there along the package, it'll tell you your clearance and you'll go from there. Welcome back to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoating. Rod ends are an important factor in the alignment of a vehicle suspension. Worn out rod ends can lead to excessive play in the suspension and premature tire wear. Rod end supply has just what you need when it comes to suspension parts for any vehicle application. Bob Douglas from Rod End Supply called me and said, you know what, Sam, I'm coming through Atlanta. I said, you know what, Bob, I need some work done on my Infinity, and I'm putting him to work. So we're doing an oil change on this Infinity. So what I've done here is already drained the oil, and we're gonna take off the oil filter, and we're gonna put the new oil filter on. Now, you always replace the crush washer if you guys are doing your own oil change at home so that you don't create any leaks. Then we're gonna put the new oil filter on. Now you guys have heard the old myth of putting the oil on the O-ring, but if you always look at your flange, you'll see there's oil on there. So there's really no reason to get yourself dirty, okay? That oil is gonna do the job. And if you're wondering about old oil on your new filter, well, there's about a quart of oil in the oil pan that doesn't come out whenever you do an oil change, so don't worry about it. All right, we're gonna put this on hand tight, and then we could drop it down and then we'll pour the oil in at the end. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pour oil back into the engine. Why don't you tell everybody about all the other different rod ends that you guys actually supply to your customers and the special things that I know you have on that table. Sounds like a great idea. Rod end supply, we've been around since 1989. So we've been around in the business for quite some time. But we make a wide, wide variety of product. We do uh, what we call uniballs and uniball cups. A lot of these are used in making suspensions, like for the off-road. We've got some that are very small that are used in shock absorbers, and so we make a lot of product for different shock manufacturers. We make connecting links for sway bars of different variety and functions. We have clevises. Some of them are used in the off-road industry. These are adjusters, and these adjusters, if you want to take a link and make it longer or shorter, one end has a right hand thread, the other hand has a left hand thread. Now what's that little guy used for? Oh, this is the smallest part that we make. It has a 540 thread and a 440 hole in the ball. It's a female, it's also aluminum. Started out, we were selling these to a guy that was manufacturing RC cars. Disney happened to see these and wanted to know if they could buy those, so we started selling them to Disney. And what Disney uses them for is the animatronics that you see in a lot of these mechanical figures, the eyeballs move, and that's, some of that's controlled by the rod ends. That's pretty which is cool, would neat. thought. Yeah. We do a lot of the weld-in bungs that you weld in tubes and you can make your own links, various and sundry sizes. We also have the high misalignment spacers that we put into the rod ends, so it gives the rod end more articulation. We do make rod ends, our injection molded rod end is probably our most popular and is, is also the most durable and the red material we call nylon fiber. It is something that we've developed. It's made out of 612 nylon infused with fiberglass and also other lubricants. Now what do you use for the big one for? Didn't you do stuff for SpaceX as well? We have a special one that we made for SpaceX. That's this particular part right here. It happens to have a Monel body. Mm -hmm. The body itself has got a slot in it because normally what they don't do, they do not use a jam nut because jam nuts have a tendency to come loose. So once this is positioned where they want it, then they've got a set screw that runs down in there and sits right down inside that slot. That's pretty smart. It was pretty interesting. Well, you have to have it reliable when you're up in space, correct? Well, yes you do. Uh, I would say that's good. I've always joked about it. If something goes wrong with the rod end up there, we're probably not gonna get it back. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. You never know. Well, we'll hope you guys learned something on where to get your rod ends when you're building custom applications. And I was a thousand miles over on my oil change, so I was able to knock that out. Thank you so much, Bob, for helping me out. It's always good to do maintenance. Absolutely, always a pleasure to have you on. It's great being here. Thank you. Welcome back to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoating. Well, we're gonna have Nora show us how to put one of these torque converters together on the actual transmission that we're putting into the car, right? Yep. Let's get started. 
All right, Nora, let's show the world exactly how this torque converter gets assembled in the transmission. I'm gonna hold the transmission, okay? This is the impeller hub. This is the top. Now we can also can control a lot of it. This is what's actually going to slide into the front pump gear. This is the impeller hub. Now we have a stator. Now these things are precision welded to hold less than five thousandths of one eight inch on both sides. So that's like two and a half thousandths of one inch. Now we have to control the stators as we're putting them on this sideways like this with the bearings. We actually stack these up in a proper way. These bearings are put on here within five hundredths of a thousand. So as you can see, the, the fitment is just incredible right there, where it only has about 30,000, 40,000 sticking out, but it's equivalent to where this um, bearing sets. So now we're gonna go on with the turbine. Now that's much more of a snugger fit because of the O-ring. That's a thick O-ring that the 4L80s have on this right here. So you've got this right here. Now that's just enough to pull it back and meet the flex plate with the proper spacing. Every single one of our torque converters are stacked out on a transmission to ensure fit and fitment, to make sure these things are gonna go in there right. Okay, Nora, and this is the front cover in the bottom where this piston's gonna line up and put your lock up on. Now, this isn't gonna stay on there too well, but this is how this would go on so that you can see how that works. Normally, it's all welded together. Thank you, Nora, you've been on an awesome job. Absolutely, did a great job. Now, let's put the real torque converter in this transmission and put it in the Cadillac. All right, so what we're gonna do is you always wanna put a little bit of fluid inside the torque converter. It's not gonna take a whole bunch. Give it a second to kind of go down through the torque converter a little bit. That way, when you put it in, you start the transmission before the oil gets there from the pump, it won't be dry. When you put the bolts in, you wanna make sure that you thread it in as much as you can with your hand. Maybe even push the torque converter to the flush with the flex plate so that you don't have a bolt whose head is stuck out too far. Then you go to spin the flywheel, or the flex plate in our case, and your bolt will get stuck somewhere up there in, in a hole or against a bolt in the bell housing. Then you gotta go through the whole process of pulling the transmission back out just so you can pull your torque converter bolt out. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in two steps because you don't want to put anything in a bind. So the first step, we're going to go in, draw the torque converter up to the flex plate, making them just snug. Then we're going to go back around, torquing everything down to 65 foot pounds. I put a mark on a position of one bolt so that I know when I come back around, when I see that mark again, I've tightened all six of my bolts. Some torque converters have three, some have six. The import market has six, and in some cases, the Hondas have 10 to 12. So you don't want to mess that up and forget you uh, tightened one. Put a mark, that way you got that as reference. Well, Nora Nelson, I want to say thank you so much for bringing us that Outlaw Torque Converter and giving us so much valuable information. And Nora, thank you so much for helping me out. You did an awesome job. Thank you. It's been a great time up here, man, and we can't really wait to see this thing come up to our second annual Boss Hog Torque Converter Car and Truck Show in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. August of 2021, you guys better be there. <laughs>